What's up guys, Brad here, AKA Home Theater Gamer. And in today's video, I'm gonna be hooking up my PC to my home theater, and we're gonna try to answer the question, is it as plug and play as a console is? So as most of us know, game consoles are pretty much plug and play. That's kind of their whole purpose, right? You buy one, you get everything you need in the box to get you up and running, right down to AA batteries for the wireless controller that it comes with. You plug everything in, do some initial setup, like maybe connect to a wireless network, log into your account, or even create your account, and then you're pretty much good to go, right? Other than installing your games. Pretty simple. But maybe you have a PC that you game on, and you're sick of sitting in your office chair, staring at your computer monitor, wearing headphones, and you'd rather be sitting on your comfy couch or sofa or recliner, looking at your nice 4K HDR TV, and maybe even Dolby Atmos surround sound. Maybe, just maybe, you've never even tried hooking up your PC to your home theater before. And that's what this video is gonna be. It's basically gonna be kind of a walkthrough of how to do that. We're gonna set everything up, make sure all our settings are correct, and NVIDIA control panel and such. And then we're gonna test out some games. But first, let me go through what you're gonna need to hook up your PC properly to your TV. You'll need the power supply cable, an HDMI cable, an ethernet cable, unless you have Wi-Fi. You'll also need a wireless keyboard and mouse or USB extension cables for your current one, a controller, unless you want a KBM on the couch, which sounds dirty, a USB cable for the controller, don't mind the pink cable, I stole this from my wife, or a wireless adapter, and a PS4 controller will work wirelessly if your PC supports Bluetooth. Obviously, game consoles like the Xbox One X, PS4 Pro fit in the entertainment center just fine, but PCs are a bit bigger and require more space, so we're gonna have to put it on the floor. Are you coming? So, PCs draw in air from the bottom of the case through the power supply, and putting it on the carpet can actually reduce airflow and build up dust over time. Now, for the short term, it'll be okay, but I had an old entertainment center that I just grabbed a shelf from, and that works out just fine. So now let's hook it up, make sure everything's set properly, and test out some games. Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Zor and the Kodan Armada. All right, so we have everything set up, everything's connected, everything's on, and now we just wanna go in and make sure all of our settings in NVIDIA control panel, as well as our audio settings and resolution and everything is set properly. Now, I am gonna be testing out a few games. However, I'm not gonna go into a guide or I'm not gonna delve into all the settings to try to get the game to run at a native 4K or even reconstructed 4K at 60. I'm not gonna go too far into that. Needless to say, depending on your hardware, if you wanna to try to run 4K 60, you're gonna to need to drop some settings. Again, I'm not gonna go through what settings to drop or anything like that. Just know that that is something that you will have to adjust. With that said, let's go ahead and jump right in here. All right, so we're right here and we're gonna go into our NVIDIA control panel first. And the first thing we're going to adjust is our resolution. We're gonna make sure that is at native 4K. Now you can leave it at 1080p if you'd like to. You don't have to. You will find that certain games, such as like the Minecraft RTX beta, you have to change the resolution here on the desktop in order to render the game at whatever resolution you specify. So 1080p, 1440p, 4K, all that stuff. So you have to change it in here in order for that, uh, for that game to function properly, just the way that stuff works. So I changed resolution. Let's go ahead and jump out of there and then we're gonna come back in because it will rescale it. So we'll actually be able to read it which is, you know, very beneficial for what we're doing. So from there, we wanna go into our manage 3D settings. If you are coming from a G-Sync monitor, then you are definitely going to wanna to change your max frame rate if you have it set up that way. For me, I have max frame rate at 141 FPS. I have V-Sync on. And for those two, like basically those are the two settings we really wanna change. So I turn that off and then for vertical sync, I'm just gonna leave it on use the 3D application. If it's not set on that, Go ahead and adjust that there. And that is pretty much it. And then for audio, it's really simple. Um, I just right click down here. I have a Dolby Atmos setup and I just go to speaker setup and I go to Dolby Atmos for home theater. Now that is free. You do have to download the Dolby Access app through the Microsoft store. So if you do not have that, definitely go and get that before you, uh, before you go to adjust that. Anyway, with that, we are pretty much good. So let's go check out some games. Uh, the first game I wanna check out is Control. Gonna go ahead and launch Control and I'm gonna select DX12 because we want DLSS because that's the way we're gonna get 4K on this title. This one's actually very simple. Disable ray tracing and use DLSS and you could probably have it render at 1440p and you'll get uh, 4K 60. It will be reconstructed, it won't be native, but that's okay. It actually looks really good 
the, the reconstructed 4K. And we're gonna hit A to start, and we will go to Options. And I will make sure that I am at 1440p. We're gonna disable VSync. I wanna see how high our, uh, our kind of buffer is, like uh, we have a little leeway. And we're gonna back out there, hit continue game. Not gonna do any spoilers for this game or anything like that. So I'm just kind of in a general area uh, that you'll get to very early on in the game. So no worries there. But now that we're in here, uh, you can see we're getting 58, 57 FPS, which, you know, isn't bad. It actually still does feel smooth. Um, we do get some tearing here once it goes over 60, but that's to be expected on a, on a 60 frames per second or a 60 hertz display. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and go in here. I'm gonna drop the resolution down just a touch, just to 2227 by 1252 and see what we get there. And already much better, much better. And it looks, it looks great. I mean, obviously you're missing ray tracing and stuff like that. Uh, if you do want to enable that, you might have to bump it down to 1080p, but uh, totally doable. But yeah, look at this, 77, 70, you know, we're in the 80s there. So if I go ahead and go back in and just enable VSync, we should be locked at 60. We might have some dips here and there, depending on how the game's loading stuff in. See how combat fares here. There's a guy in here, say, hey, hey, buddy. Yeah, locked 60 frames per second. Pretty, pretty sweet. Get these guys here. Can't shoot anything. Now watch, these guys are just gonna disappear. Bam, where do they go? Thanks, Control. Great game design. Actually, no, this is a really fun game. It's just a little glitch. I find it funny. So let's move on to a different game. And let's go ahead and go for everybody's favorite new card melting game, Minecraft RTX. Now this will definitely not run on my system at 4K, even with the LSS and ray tracing. It's just not gonna happen. I do have it at 4K and you'll see in a moment what I mean. So as I've loaded in here, I'm using the Razzlecore texture pack or resource pack. And as you can see, I'm getting, you know, 40, 41. So not really playable. You can maybe lock it at 30 within the NVIDIA control panel, but the whole point of playing on a PC is that you can't play at 60 FPS. So, so let's go ahead and get out of the game and we're gonna go back into the NVIDIA control panel and change our resolution down to 1080p. That will get us at 60 frames per second with ray tracing and it'll still look pretty good. It won't be native 4K, but you know, sometimes you, you can't always get what you want, just like the song. And now we definitely will be locked at 60. In my experience playing with the monitor that I have, the AOC 27G2, uh, with G-Sync on, I'm always getting uh, between 80 and 100 FPS with ray tracing on and DLSS. So we should have no problem locking this to 60 FPS. Man, that, you know, I still get impressed with the ray tracing in this. It's technically path tracing, but for what it is, I've played countless, countless hours of Minecraft and there's just something about it. I don't know. I really, I really dig it. I built this whole thing just messing around. Just, I wanted to see what lights do and like what the sunlight does coming through the windows and stuff. That's the, this is okay. This is not a this is not a thing about Minecraft. So, let's move on. So, we're going to check out one more game and for this, I'm going to go in and enable HDR. Now, personally, I've had a lot of issues getting HDR to work properly through Windows on the Xbox, on the PS4 Pro. They both work pretty much flawlessly out of the box. However, for something to do with Windows and the way it handles it, I'm just, I have not been impressed with it. And what do I mean by that? What ends up happening is the picture gets extremely washed out. I've tried every variation of settings. Uh, I've tried changing all of this stuff, the output color depth, the, the output color format, output dynamic range, which is limited because you can't change that when you're in HDR and in like YCB, this, this guy right here. So keep that in mind, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 4K. The game we're gonna be trying out is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, not the best running game, but I really wanna see what we end up getting, because I've actually never tried that game on the PC on my TV here. Let's go ahead and boot that up. All right, so we are in 
Assassin's Creed here. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit continue. We're gonna jump into the game and then adjust some settings here. All right, so we are currently at 1080p, I believe, and I'm gonna go in here in a second. We are getting over, what, uh, 60 FPS, so that's good. So let's go into, if we go into options. Okay, so if we go into here, why is it at 24 Hertz? This game has a mind of its own, I tell you. So let's jump over to 4K and we're gonna go 60, apply. And we do have the option for HDR. I'm gonna leave that off for now. V-Sync is off, so let's just see what we get when we go into the game here. So very sharp, very sharp, but if you look at our frames, not that great. Not that great. So what can we do? Well, thankfully this game has a resolution modifier and we'll be able to drop that down a little bit to, here we go. I think it goes in 25%, 10% increments. So let's drop it down to 80% of 4K, which is still way above 1080p, mind you. So here we are still not getting, uh, not getting what we, what we really want. So maybe drop it down another 20% and it looks like the lowest we can go is 50. So let's see what happens at 60%. That's looking a little blurrier, but we are right there on the brink of 60 FPS. You know, if we're looking at the sky or something like that, we'll definitely go above that. So let me go back in and we'll drop that down to 50%, which at that point, you might as well just be running 1080p. At least with this, all the HUD elements and stuff like that will be rendered at 4K. Just the internal resolution of the game. And we can always add NVIDIA sharpening if we want to, to kind of sharpen it up. But if we go back in and enable VSync here, we'll just do on. But now we are definitely locked at 60 FPS. Again, we might get a dipper here and there, depending on how the game is loading in information. But other than that, it's pretty much locked. And so the final piece of the puzzle is we enabled HDR so we could have HDR available in this game, which I've noticed if I don't enable it in the Windows menu, then this option will not be available, which is just kind of kind of weird. Some games have are like that and some games aren't. If we go down here, we're gonna turn HDR on. And again, you might not notice on your screen, actually you won't because it's captured in SDR, So I want to talk about HDR settings in Windows 10 for a moment. I'm not able to capture any HDR footage using NVIDIA's capture tool and OBS just kind of drops my frame rate a ton. So I just want to talk about this. Basically, Windows 10 and its handling of HDR content is terrible. I've had nothing but issues with it. On every game I've tried, peak highlights are blown out. The lowest luminance values, the darkest, the, the darkest darks, the blacks, are completely washed out in every game I've tried. I've never been able to get a good picture out of HDR using a PC. Completely different ball game with either of the consoles. Those work flawlessly. Even in Assassin's Creed, using the same HDR settings that I do on the PC and on console, the console's on a completely different playing field, if you want to call it that, when it comes to HDR. It looks fantastic. The PC, again, I've had nothing but issues with it. Now, my recommendation personally is if you are gaming on PC on your home theater, do not use HDR. Playing games, there's something going on with the way Windows 10 handles HDR that it just completely ruins the experience. Now you can Google this and a ton of other people have the same issue. My personal recommendation, do not use HDR when you're gaming on PC. So after going through all of that, what conclusion can we come to? Is PC gaming as plug and play as console gaming is? Well, if maximum performance is what you're after, then definitely not. In order to play any of these games at 4K60, and I tried to pick a few titles that weren't known for their performance as kind of like a worst case scenario, we either had to drop the resolution down or the resolution modifier, or simply go into the NVIDIA control panel and drop our resolution down there, either to 1440p or 1080p. My TV doesn't support 1440p, so 1080p was my only other option. In that regard, PC gaming will be a much more involved process than console gaming. But it's not all negative. Being able to go in and adjust quality settings based on what you prefer to lower is something that the consoles just don't have. If you're someone who doesn't mind tweaking quality settings and graphic settings in games to get the maximum performance, then this is definitely right up your alley. 
In fact, one could argue you just end up tweaking your settings in your office setup anyway, so this is just more of the same. However, if you'd rather have the simplicity of a plug and play console with no settings to adjust and you just plop down and play your games, then this might not be for you. There's no harm in that, and honestly, games are games. And if you have fun, that's really the whole purpose of playing games, right? Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. There's no PC Master Race, there's no console fanboys, there's just gamers. And that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment down below letting me know if you did. Hit that like button and uh, don't forget to subscribe. I try to post new weekly content revolving around gaming and home theater. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one where I get locked in a freezer with a dead guy. Guys, I'm stuck with the stick! He's in here!